everyone and welcome back to Hogwarts Mystery. We are now in the final part because we are going to take the last two parts in this event together. So we are in the final part of the Teacher Appreciation Celebration presentation. Now again, that's a tongue fumble as I call them, because try and repeat those, like those four words in a row ten times. That's really just gonna be a word fumble. I, I'm just that that's that's really just just a thing waiting to happen. However, let's see here. The celebration is ready. Come to the great hall. That's very lovely. And now, yes, I am aware of the maybe there is a discrepancy in the entry viewpoints, and I shall explain why. I had a recording error for the last part here when I was recording on my main account. This is my backup one. And for some reason I had clicked the record and it did not record the whole event. And I don't know why and it was really annoying but that was what happened. So I had to go through the whole event again on my backup account. I had to first find it uh, and got, get to the point where it, this event would activate. And then it's fine. So now we can go and have our lovely Doubly presentation of Miss or yeah, Mrs. Miss McGonagall Minerva, at least. At least it's Professor Minerva McGonagall. So let's go and celebrate our teachers. And hopefully, we're going to do her justice because else we have failed. So let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, it's a little buggy. I'm sorry about if it's uh, lacking a little bit. I think it requires a lot of uh, rendering from my tablet with all these people in line and people everywhere. And <gasps> Oh, everyone is here. How lovely. Oh, Quail is here too as well. Okay. Oh, there's Robin. Okay, okay. I forgot that actually. As you can see, we have little Robin over here. So she is here. She's just been doing something else, and that's what I've explained before in the, in uh, episodes or in the events. They kind of just take a handful of the characters, else it would just be too massive. People won't be able to do anything because you have to go all the way around all your friends, especially in later years when you get how many friends now? <laughs> so they just pick a handful for the events, and that's fine, I guess. Anyway, so far the presentation have been quite good. Though Marula's was so fast it might not count. Oh, really? I feel so bad for Quirrell now. Like, she was just like, yeah, he likes Marvel Studios. Done. <laughs> I hope that's not the case. That would be so sad. Okay, let's see here. Madame Pins. I worry about being away from the library. If I'm gone, who will preserve its quiet sanctity? Pins, we are all gathered here. All students, all teachers. There's not gonna be noises there unless the book starts to talk. Wait, is that a thing? Can the books talk? I don't know. I hope not. I don't know. Is she shushing the books? That could be funny, actually. However, oh, we also have Quirrell. What does he have to say? A muggle feast is typically... Uh, at a muggle feast, it's typical to drink something they call champagne. But I, find, but I find it gives me a headache. Yes, Quirrell, it's called alcohol. And if you are not that prone to alcohol... Well, um... You're gonna get a headache. If your body can't handle it, you're gonna get a headache and pretty fast. But that's again one of my my thought processes about like the magical world with their drinks because example wise butterbeer, as far as I know, is a non-alcoholic, but apparently just by this statement, it seems like they might not really have alcohol in it. As a thing, really, do I think? I don't know. That's that's actually a conundrum for me now because if there was a thing called alcohol in the visit world, I do believe they drink wine though. But there's a thing, if they don't know alcohol is a thing, 
I mean, that's kind of odd. I would say. Anyway, uh, let's not diddle daddle and hear what. Oh, it's Penny! Let's see what Penny has to say. Yes, indeed. And that's why I appreciate Professor Snape. Because not only is he a brilliant potions master, <laughs> but he also always find a way to make me smile. So thank you, Professor Snape, for cheering me up always. Aww. Aww, look, look at Madame Hooch and McGonagall like, mm, door. she found your good side that we know you have that you will never talk about. <laughs> oh, well, <clears throat> yes, well, yes, well. Oh, he didn't get to say anything done. Oh, he's gonna talk to her. Okay, I see. It's a private conversation, I see. Leave it to Penny to pour sunshine and rainbows or even Snape, the darkest teacher of the lot. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> you do it better, Marula. <laughs> well, I feel... Well, I feel quite pleased with how it went. Yeah, old Snape looked real happy. This means my presentation must be coming up soon. Huh? Are you all right? You're right. It's almost time, Nadia. Yes. By the way, my backup account is not called Ray Bright. It's called Nod Nadia Feathercraft, I believe. So just live with that description, see? Because I'm not going to change the name and then change the name back again afterwards. So just just live with that for a second. <laughs> Blame my recorder, <laughs> if anything, if you're getting twitches like I am actually right now, so... It, it's a recording error that I have to fix up, of course, so I just... yeah. <laughs> Are you nervous? Well, definitely! Who won't be nervous in front, like, a presentation? Even as a teacher today, I still have these kind of goosebumps and butterflies every time I have to present a new subject for my students. Because the way I teach will that align with the way they learn or do I have to do something else for making them understand the subject that is always a nervousness about me as well so yeah of course I would be nervous I even have exams angst and I have had issues with that since I was a child or younger young young student so yeah I uh, presentations give me the heebie-jeebies so it will give all characters too <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely nervous. It's a big responsibility to present on the guest of honor. <laughs> That's true. But don't be nervous. You are imminently prepared. <laughs> you have interviewed several professors. You have talked out what you're going to say with your friends. <laughs> and you spend quality time with Professor McGonagall too. Thanks, Penny. You already decided that you were going to highlight. Just remember what Hagrid said and speak from the heart. Yes, indeed we did. <laughs> now it is time for our final presentation on the guest of honor, Professor Minerva McGonagall. Uh. Miss Feathercraft. Yes, it is Nordia Feathercraft, my character is called. <laughs> On my backup accounts, just live with it. I'm, uh, eh. It's actually a really creative name now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> uh, I must have been tired when I figured that one out. I don't know. Would you please join us? I also tried to make her look more or less like our character and such, just to make it some seemly aligned with the event and how my character looks and such. So. I apologize for the mistakes that my recorder make. <laughs> it's still hitting me mentally because it's just so annoying and stupid. Anyway. Thank you, Professor Dumbledore. I'm excited to be doing my presentation on Professor McGonagall. Alrighty then, so let's see. What will it be? A free hour one? Is there not going to be an 8-hour or a 6-hour one at all? It's, are they just going to throw everything out the window now? 
my my expectation of a duel of there at least being one six or eight hour one doing the it's probably going to be at the last part is probably going to be a six or eight hour one i know these events <laughs> don't don't mess with my my expectations of events you sneaky little ones <laughs> please do not <laughs> but it might also just be one of like a, a little lovely one did you might actually be able to complete within the time frame without using gems or extra, you know? Who knows? Anyway, let's start out and hear what we have to say. Oh, it's loading a bit. There we go. Let's see here. Professor McGonagall came to Hawkers from he here in the islands. Oh yeah, that's right, she was from the highlands. Yes, yes. What does McGonagall have to say? Oh, it's us. During her time as a student, Professor McGonagall was a prefect and a head girl. Yes, she was. She was indeed. After graduating Hogwarts, Professor McGonagall joined the Ministry of Magic. Mary just, just information based like facts, like pla 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 pla. Another one, and another information, and another information. That's always gonna be. Oh dear. We talked over a game of visit chess. And it was so funny, I had to laugh about it. Professor McGonagall is an excellent chess player and a shrewd opponent. Oh, really? She's shrewd? Really now? Professor McGonagall was a star student through hard work and dedication. Mm. My subject played Quidditch here at school. Alongside with Madame Hooch, I believe. I have really enjoyed my time interviewing Professor McGonagall. Even though it was at times a little difficult. But I'm not going to say that. Of course not. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Professor McGonagall had many achievements as a student. Oh, we started to circle with our character sprites uh, thing. Okay, do we have one more with uh, McGonagall? Our transformation professor is clearly one of the most beloved here at Hogwarts. Yes, it, well, in the highlight of what we've heard, indeed she is. During her time here as a student, Professor McGonagall... Oh, so we're circling here too. So now it's just to find the biggest ones. Alrighty then. That's not a big one. That's a big one. Ah, we can use. And another one. And another one. Oh, yeah, well. Hippogriff. I might as well also level up the, the clubs here at my um, spare account. That might be working in my favor at some point because I fear it might not be the last time my computer decides to do this. <laughs> um, so let's see here. So as you can see, Professor McGonagall had a long list of accomplishments before she even began teaching. After decades of teaching young wizards and witches at Hogwarts, Professor McGonagall's made many friends. Hmm. And also fans in both her colleagues and students. But what I found most compelling about the professor is how humane and devoted she is, not only to her friends, but to students and colleagues, but to her students and colleagues. Wherever she's helping students see strength and in knowledge and how they can free you from a bully, or helping a friend study their, for their hours exam when she was just a student herself. Even making sure I had fun in my interview by engaging me in a spirited ch game of chess. She's very compassionate. Knowledge, knowledge is power, and Professor McGonagall knows that. Well said. I have never known a truer friend. We're lucky to know you, Minerva. <laughs> I think Nadia is doing brilliantly. Oh, I have to get used to saying Nadia. 
<laughs> Is was there something else you would like to add, Miss Feathercraft? Just that teachers like Professor McGonagall's matter. Not just for the subject they teach, but but because they choose to educate and prepare us for a challenging and never changing world. That's also actually true from just Muggle perspective in, in our world. Like we do our best to teach you for a world that's ever changing and we're just gonna do our best. Some more than others, I do know there are teachers out there that misuse the position. I hope I will never be one of those. Because I am always seeing myself as a helper in, in the matters of teaching and I want the best out of you that I possibly can get. But yeah, it, it's a challenging thing for both students and teachers. At Hogwarts, our home away from home, our teachers are more than just educators. They are also our family. Oh, that's actually very nice. That's a cute speech right there. So thanks to all our teachers, and especially Professor McGonagall, for this anniversary. Ah, here, here, here! And we got to applaud! I mean, really? Oh, she's so proud. She's proud of us. I'm so glad. Well done, Miss Feathercraft. Oh. Yes, that was quite the celebration of our friend. You clearly know how to do our esteemed colleague we you, you clearly know our esteemed colleague well. You do research, so well perhaps someday you should go on a quest for knowledge as well as I am about to do. Yeah. I wish you all luck, dude. At least I got to know you before you were yours, like, sketchy, um, nervousness, angsty kind of behavior in the first. For those who haven't seen the first movie, his personality has a definitely changed in the, in the first movie. Here he's kind of confident and in himself, and he's really interested in his studies. In the first movie he's much more skittish, he's much more nervous about everything, especially around Harry Potter. Which you will come to understand why in the movie. And that's about what I'm gonna say, basically. But it, it's really nice to get a window into the past and maybe know, get to know some of the characters a little better before the be, before happens what happens in Harry Potter, basically. So, in the Harry Potter timeline, rather, and not in ours. So, it, it's, it's nice with a little, hey peeking in to the past window kind of thing. That's really nice. Well, thanks. I really appreciate all your encouragement and kind words. Huh. Well, now let's join the feast. Huh. Miss Feathercraft, I must... I, I must second my colleague's sentiment. And thank you for your loving presentation on me, and for what you said about all your teachers. Of course, Professor. I hope you feel I did you justice. Mm. It most certainly did. But let's not fish for more compliments. I wouldn't say I enjoyed it if I didn't. Oh. I would simply be polite and then help myself to some part of you. <laughs> well, that it's nice to know we did you justice, but then we know when you're disappointed, then it, you'll just be drinking butter beer. That's lovely to know. I have to admit, I'm relieved to be done with it all. Oh. Well, but however, you you are not quite done yet. We still have our visit chess game. I will see you soon to finish it. Ah. Yes, and we will be taking the last part here, of course, it's a part of it all. And let's see here. Finish your chess game. Join me in Transfigurations to finish our chess game. Yes, so we will go and do that right away. Indeed. Oh man, we still have the 
great hall background sound. It's so loud compared to all the other background music and sounds because now it's just dead silent compared to it when you're sitting with headphones and such in it. Um, but yeah, this is the last part, guys. So exciting. I can't hardly believe this is our last visit, just session, Professor McGonagall. Ah. Indeed it is. And I was happy to see you get out of the check you were in last time we met. I have to thank you for giving me such a unique experience while preparing for my presentation. None of the other stars... None of the other students got to play chess with the teacher they were interviewing. No, but they probably did something else, probably. Especially, uh, maybe except um, Madame Pence, or is it Professor Pence, or what, what, what it was? Something Pence. Li the librarian, she just wanted to go back to her books. That would probably be sad. <laughs> hmm. I am glad you enjoyed our game. You have conducted yourself in a manner I appreciate. Uh, in our time together. Ah. Especially like that you focused your presentation on values I truly respect. Mm. Such as humanity and devotion. I was only saying what I heard from others and saw myself, Professor. You all that and more. Mm. Still, you exhibited deep appreciation and respect for all teachers as well. Ah. Which may have been my favorite part of the presentation. Yes, indeed. Like, that was what she constantly said from the start and the get-go, actually, was the part that she really wanted everyone to be praised the same, so... We kind of catered to that as well, unknowingly, so... Or at least not for our character. It was not planned from our perspective. It was just something that happened from our characters, so... Yeah, interesting. Mm hmm? But I am curious what your favorite part of this experience has been. Our talks, talking to all the professors, the visit chess game. I would say our talks, even though you were an iceberg at start, you have opened up a quite a bit. Oh, that's easy. Our talks. We don't often get much one-on-one -on -one time with our professors. And I especially, and especially not with you, it was a real pleasure. Ah. Oh, that was very kind of you to say. Mm? Though I must admit, I would rather hear about your interactions with your other teachers as well. I'll be happy to tell you about them. Oh yes, indeed. Let's see. Come on, eight hour one, because I am expecting you to be here. No? Really? Okay, so every pre-termination of every event now is just out the window. Because no duels anymore. Especially even not not even in the Halloween events anymore. And the 6 and 8 hour ones are not a guarantee either anymore. Everything is out the window. And we just have to... Uh, I just have to hoard a lot of uh, energy points in the end. Hope I have enough then. Yes, I guess so. Whoopsie doo. <laughs> Okay, we just have to do it that way again. Let's see here. Oh, I love when she put her hands together. It's just so wholesome. It's just like, oh, I love this. I love our time together. It's so lovely. Madame Hooch and her, I can laugh about Quidditch and have a row about it too. Oh, oh yeah, that, that was what Hooch said. Like, she just wished that McGonagall would sometime agree with her judgment. So let's see here. Professor Spout talked about your friendship as students were as students here at Hogwarts. Oh, I see. Professor Sprout is kind and nurturing and a true friend. Aww. Professor Snape wanted to be sure that I put forward my best in the presentation. Yeah, else he will get us a stern look and come. Miss... F I was about to say maybe Sprite, but this is Miss Feathercraft. Miss Feathercraft, you're not doing enough. Do better. I know you can. <laughs> 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 
Professor Snape is brilliant, yet complex. Yes, indeed he is. But I also know a lot of his background stories, so that explains why he's very complex. Divulge. Professor Dumbledore thought it was a privilege to teach you and work with you. Professor Quill has much potential. Oh, that's not Dumbledore? Wait, what? Oh, Professor Quill uh, appreciated your help when he was a student himself. So this is gonna be the Dumbledore one, right? They just mix them around. I hate when the snippets do not match up with the parts, especially when you try to make it cohesive, but it just kind of randomly intermingle with all the things. I, I don't like that particular part, but you can't get it all. At least you get to know them, and it's being nitpicky, I know. The headmaster has my utmost, uh, utmost respect and dedication. Yes. You also looked very much up to him as a, as a student, as far as I remember. Madame Hooch is, uh, Madame Hooch is obsessed with the infamous Quidditch Cup match. I see. Madame Hooch and I can laugh about Quidditch and have a row about it. Oh, we already starting to circle. All right, I guess. Now we're just going to take the biggest one. And Professor Sprout about the... The friendship, which is nice and lovely. Your nurturing friend, yes indeed. Yes, yes. Oh, it's a two both of them, so I'm just gonna take the cloth one. Yes, and Professor Snape. Uh, that's a three. Are we there? We're there yet? No. Okay. We gotta be here now. Okay. What is the last one? I know it's a circle, but what is the last one? It's about Professor Quill. Professor Quill will appreciate your help when he was a student himself. Yes, because you taught him that knowledge can help you from bullies. Which it actually can. Technically. Not completely, but technically. Depending on the situation, of course. It seems your friends and fellow teachers appreciate you as much as you appreciate them. Ah. Yes, that is true. And I'm very grateful for that. And for this celebration Professor Dumbledore organized. Hmm. Though I realize I didn't make the interview process entirely easy on you. Aww. Oh, she's sorry. Like, look at her face. She's so... Um, slightly uncomfortable with it. Like you once said, nothing life worth earning comes easily. Hmm. Still, I have been thinking about it, and perhaps there is a reason. What is it, Professor? Mm. I lost someone very dear to me not long ago. S and so, talking about my past especially feels difficult. Oh yes, wasn't she married and he died? Uh... I can't remember what he did or whatever, or how he died, but I do specifically remember she was married and he died for some reason and then she just stayed, I think she lives in Hogsmeade, and then she just became a teacher or something, I can't remember if they're ordered or whatever, I just know her husband died, so maybe that's the person she's talking about? Or something? I'm sorry to hear that. Hmm. Oh, thank you. And although I wouldn't normally share information of a personal nature, of a personal nature with a student, mm. I know you too have suffered loss in life, and yet you keep on going, and that is why I wanted you to understand. Ah. There is no perfect plan for our journeys in life, as in chess. You must always, you must be ready to change and adapt. Oh. What? How do you mean? Mm. Well, when your brother first disappeared, you changed. When you came to Hogwarts, you had to grow. Ah. Even in our interviews, you had to find new ways to learn because of obstacles you didn't expect. Well, that's true. Mm. So as you see, 
It's not the plans you make in chess or in life, or even whether you win or lose. It is how you move forward from the game and take the lesson and take those lessons to the next one that matters most. Thanks, Professor. I remember that. Good. Good. Because it's time for your next move. In this game, at least. Mm -hmm. What will it be? Hmm, let's think about it. What is our final move? Will we win? Knight to h3. Uh oh. Oh, something happened. Wait, I'm in checkmate? You won, Professor. Ah. This time? But you will have many others. Oh. And to that end, I would like to give you something. Ah. One of my very own visit chessboards. Consider it a memento of our time together. I, I don't know what to say. Ah. Say nothing. You were a worthy opponent. You have earned it. Thanks, Professor. But don't you need your chessboards? Mm. Don't worry about me. I have another. And I expect we'll both find clever ways to use our chessboards. Ah. To the benefit of ourselves, and perhaps even to the benefit of Hogwarts in the future. Interesting. And now we have gotten the chessboard. Yes. Uh, we are not close to. Hold on, wait one. I don't think we got a chessboard out of that. However, we can go and check it in this character's um, dormitory. Oh, it's quite empty compared to the one I have normally, as you can see. <laughs> she doesn't have anything. <laughs> Uh, she does have a chessboard, and the reason why I want to show you in her dormitory how, how it works is because I actually already activated the chessboard. So, what do you get when you click on the chessboard? You get gems from that. So we actually have two. Technically, we have two gem collectors now from the events we have already had, um, from the Bobatten, and now also from the McGonagall event, and the rest like the Christmas one from last year. You get a snow globe that has energy pointers, and then you have all your pets that's not here. Actually, I think I think I'm going to go back to my um, my normal schedule, <laughs> um, or my normal dormitory on my main account, so I can probably explain it a little better. So, okay, now we're back in more recognizable area, and as you can see. I have already activated the chessboard, but what I was talking about with the Bobatten and the, the you can say snowball or with the car and they are actually already here and already ready to be collected, so we can just show you what they also do. So the Bobatten gives you a gem, so we actually have two two gem collectors now, which is really good actually. And also we have the car which is an energy pointer. That gives you an energy. And then we have all our pits. Now, as I said before, I'm only missing two of them. If there are not more to be coming soon, who knows? I don't know. I have no idea, actually. But we, we are starting to feel a little hoardish. Like hoarder with pets, maybe a little bit. Anywho, with that... I actually think I'll be ending off here. Because I actually got to record it and I'm just so happy that... I do have this backup account that I can go to every time I flop things up or my or technical things happen. So I'm not that immensely lost as I felt earlier today. <laughs> so um, on to next time guys, which is probably going to be the Christmas event because now I have to hoard a lot of energy points because again, all the things have now been thrown out the window. I don't know if everything's gonna be eight hour ones now or everything's just gonna be one of three hours ones. And you know, everything is out the window now. So I just have to hoard as many points as I can in the... Well, I, I hope uh, the Christmas event one will be released around like 18 or 19th of December so I can manage to record it before the holidays re-kick in. Um, 
but we just have to wait and see about that. But that means I have about two, two and a half weeks of hoarding these uh, lovely energy pointers again. And after that, hopefully we can go back to some pure main story. Because <laughs> we, we need to do that, because I haven't done that for quite a while. And one little check up with Bill is not enough. We should be progressing more in the story, since I know we're already at year six by updates. So we really need to get there. So until next time, guys, take care and have a fantastic day.